Welcome to What's New in Burbank. The City of Burbank Ponytail Softball Program just turned 60. The person who started it all, Barbara Round, is well into her 90s, but her memories are as vivid as ever. I thought, why not have a league like the boys do? And I said something about it, and one of the men said, and you'll be using all the facilities and we're full already. <laughs> but my boss was very cooperative, and he believed, as I did, that women and girls should have a place to play. So we put an ad in the paper, of course, and uh, we came out, and the first time we uh, advertised it, we had six teams, which was an indication of the need right there. It's never been done before. The next year, we had 22 teams, and it just escalated from there. And nothing but fun, but we concentrated on good sportsmanship. Barbara is sitting in front of the Burbank Athletics Walk of Fame at George Ize Park. She was part of the first group of inductees in 2004. In 1957, founded, she founded the Burbank Ponytail Softball League, which was to become a national model for girls' fast-pitch softball programs. The first year, there were six teams. By 1980, when she left, almost 100 teams were participating. Congratulations and unveil your very deserving star. When I first came to work for the Park and Recreation Department, there were no women's and girls sports, and there was not a, an actual bar a barrier to it, but nobody had ever thought of doing it. They were busy promoting the boys and the men and so forth. And being uh, an athlete myself, I wanted the girls to get in and be recognized. And I'm not sure what uh, year it was. They did the, the, the diamond in my name. And I often say I'm so glad they didn't wait till I died because <laughs> I've enjoyed it tremendously. And my four grandsons have played on my diamond. And you think that isn't a thrill, you know. <laughs> on Monday, September 11th, Warner Brothers Studios hosted a groundbreaking ceremony on their studio lot to kick off construction of their newest soundstage, Stage 29. The mayor and the entire city council put on their finest construction outfits, picked up their shovels, and tossed some ceremonial dirt to christen the new site, along with Warner Brothers president of Worldwide Studio Facilities, John Gilbert. And why is it so important uh, to continue building sound stages? It's really quite simple. With each new stage we build, we're able to accommodate another production onto our lot and attract another production to Burbank. Each new production brings over a hundred new well-paying jobs to our studio. And each new production brings millions of new dollars into our community, as well as to the support businesses with the additional jobs they create. The new stage, which is actually Warner Brothers' 36th soundstage, will be 18,000 square feet equipped with silent air conditioning and will include a 110 kilowatt solar energy system on the roof, a feature the mayor took delight in pointing out to the crowd. You guys have gone back and forth now with the new IKEA on the kilowatts on the roof. So I think that this will top them. And now who, who can imagine what IKEA might come up with next? Uh, the city of Burbank very proudly supports Warner Brothers and your many employees. Uh, we're excited to have you as part of our community and we look forward to working closely with you to ensure your continued success in Burbank and beyond. Thank you for being here, Warner Brothers. We appreciate you. Warner Brothers Soundstage 29 is expected to be completed by June 2018. The city of Burbank will be replacing about 400 trees, mostly ficus trees over the next 15 years, and replacing them with Chinese pistache and pink trumpet trees. The Magnolia Park reforestation plan calls for replacing the trees along Magnolia Boulevard from the I-5 freeway bridge to the Burbank border 
and the trees on Hollywood Way from Chandler Boulevard to Clark Avenue. Replacing every 15th tree over 15 years, that's about 35 per year, will make for a smooth visual transition. To deal with issues that have been growing since around the year 2000, when abiding by the Americans with Disabilities Act became a concern. We looked at it and we went, okay, we really, there's some places where we're missing ADA clearance because we've got this huge tree well. Now we look at it and we go, okay, they drop berries, they get into sewer lines, they mess up the sidewalks, they mess up the streets, the curb lines. Just the infrastructure damage is the biggest thing that we're dealing with right now. And the, the business owners don't appreciate the fact that they drop stuff on their roofs, um, and they block signage. Another problem making its way from Florida in recent years is the ficus whitefly. They poop sugar water. And if you've ever spilled sugar water in the kitchen, you know that it's sticky for the next 200 years. And so we've been treating the ficus trees to, to keep them from having that problem for the last four or five years at about $15,000 a year. I'm Peter Masurlian, and this has been What's New in Burbank.